Hey guys, Jagus here, back with another build orders video, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about Alder build orders. Um, now this video will be for those people who have always wanted to try Alder, but don't really know where to start. Well, these build orders will hopefully help give you an idea of how to um, start off playing them. And I would encourage uh, practicing these build orders just so you get the the general gist of 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 what goes on with this uh, mysterious race. Um, I'm going to be explaining things a little bit differently than I normally do. Uh, I'll be explaining the builds in terms of tier 1 and tier 2. So hopefully that makes things a bit easier for you guys to understand and I'll get into a game now. I will make one against the computer. I know you guys like seeing uh, live live games with actual players but just to, just to show you the uh, general, you know, uh, idea of how the how the race works. I'll just hop into a AI game here, but maybe I'll add in some clips of of uh, real pros uh, playing and and uh, just to help back up some things that I say. Explanations. So let's start now. Okay, so the first build I'm going to show you is the one I see get played the most, and it's the Dark Reaper build, the Dark Reaper op opener. So basically what that is, is we just make one aspect portal, cure it one bone singer, two guardian squads. Uh, get both bone singers to build the aspect portal, cure up one generator. And we also have two guardian squads on the way, plus the fleet of foot research. The fleet of foot research is uh, pretty vital to, to outer you. It, it's kind of like the, yeah, it forms the basis of most of the strategies. Uh, adding the reaper aspect stone add-on. And we just queue up the cap orders as usual. Oh, once the aspect stone is added on, we make one Dark Reaper squad. We make two Dark Reaper squads, actually. Now, we won't have the blue just yet to build our listing shrines, but as soon as we can, we, we need to uh, build those up. So we've got to be keeping an eye on, on our blue while we play this race. Reapers are out. Now now we kind of just wait for the fleet of foot research to be done. Just to give our uh, squads that, that increase in uh, speed. Fleet of foot, while it's on, will let your squads run 50% faster, but they'll be 50% less accurate. So when you're attacking, you have to turn it off. And this is when your micro skills will be tested a little bit. Uh, out of a very micro intensive race. So we press F. For me it's F, I don't know what hotkeys you guys use, but I'll be using F for fleet of foot to turn it on. Whenever you're not in battle and just walking around, you need to just be uh, fleet of footing everywhere, just because it's much, much faster. So this is good. Okay, we got Necrons. So what I, whenever I'm going to attack, what I do is I just select the squad. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Okay, let's say we got Fleet of Foot on, we're chasing, chasing our opponent, press Q to stop, and I switch between the squads and pr and just tap F to turn it off. You can press tab, but um, this is just the way I do it, just do it however you guys feel comfortable. But basically we just chase after our enemies with Fleet of Foot on and then stop, turn it off. It's a bit hard to explain, but you kind of have to just uh, uh, practice yourself. But look at that, we almost wiped out one uh, Necron Warrior squad there. If we need to run away, we can just uh, fleet a foot away from the action. These Guardians can have fleet a foot on, just to get to the points faster. But yeah, we can basically kite this way, and it's very hard to stop actually. Now we do need to add the X-Arch. The X-Arch will add a an extra 15, that's 1-5% damage to the squad's overall damage. So while we're going about harassing and gaining our value, we, we need to be focusing on our economy. We can upgrade at least one listing post, without or it's fine. Uh, one is fine. The LV2s aren't really the strongest. 
but yeah, we can survive with just one. And as soon as possible, we we will build our soul shrine and go tier two, and that's the build for tier one. You just basically run off these uh, two squads. Now there are some alternatives. So if you're up against say a sisters player, right, and they do the seraphim rush against you, usually they can tie up your dark reapers with the missionaries while your seraphims, uh, I mean not your seraphims, their seraphims chase down your dark reapers and just gun them down. So a good counter to that is to research this plasma grenade research here. And what that does is it adds a plasma grenade to your guardians. So what you do then is you keep your guardians close to your dark reapers. And if your dark reapers get tied up, you can use the grenade to just stun that squad. And then your dark reapers can focus it, focus them down. And, and uh, that helps get that pressure off from your uh, dark reapers. It also works against like assault marines or storm boys when they jump right into your uh, squads and try to tie them up. Yeah, very useful stuff. The other one is like against a Necron player in a 1v1. Uh, players will definitely uh, abuse the Wraith Tomb uh, research here. Basically what that does is it gives your Bone Singer the Wraith Tomb ability and you can jump into the Necron's base Wraith Tomb their monolith, and that'll shut them out from going, uh, from producing units and going tier two, because the the monolith does everything for Necrons, uh, in terms of, yeah, production and and researching. So that's just a complete shutdown for them, and it, you definitely need to be doing that in in Necron matchups to to give you the edge. Otherwise, you just lose. I think I'm not too sure. Uh, yeah. So keep those in mind. Having Wraith Tomb can also help disable turrets and listening posts. So if your opponent has a pretty solid defense with maybe, yeah, a turret in a pretty strategic location, just Wraith Tomb it, take it down with your Dark Reapers, you're all good. Sweet. Uh, on to the other builds. Okay guys, so another build I, I see... Um, played sometimes. I think if you want to go like for a fast tier 2 is the Rangers build. And usually I've seen players just sit on Rangers for all of tier 1 just to sneak around and break squad's morale and Rangers actually do pretty decent damage as well. So here I go, I just make the Ranger squad. And once the plasma generator is up, we'll research the infiltration. Now, I would advise uh, for this build, just be careful with it. I don't. It would probably not work in one v ones. I see it played the most on team games because if you get attacked, you know you have your teammates to help you out. Uh, but it is a pretty cost cost effective uh, opening, I would say. You definitely have more. Uh, resources in reserve to to get your eco up and going and also yeah rangers like i said just have good damage even on uh some lower health buildings like lp ones they actually do pretty decent damage actually so while those are getting out we'll just build up our listing shrines get our economy going at some point we'll build an extra generator or two And boom, now our rangers are infiltrated, so this is good. We uh, get add more squad members. Now we can flee to foot them, and we can just go out and harass. This opening is good against Tau, I believe. If your if your uh, enemy is making fire warriors, yeah, th this opening will will break the fire warriors' morale, and it, they can even like pick off some of those uh, squad members. Pretty. Pretty easily, actually. So now, even against Necrons, it's pretty good. But Necrons also have Scarabs that can easily detect your ranges early on. So I wouldn't advise, uh, definitely would not advise using this strategy against Necrons. But obviously, I'm just uh, showing you for the purpose of demonstration. But look at how much yeah morale damage these ranges do. And even just the damage on, on these... Uh, on 
these snipers. So basically this is it, we just survive with one squad. Like I said, works team games. Not really. Against Tau, yeah it's good. Until they get the Vespids out. But even then, like the fact that they have to get Vespids just for this, just to stop this, is pretty good for you. But uh, yeah, so I thought I'd just show you that guys. This is a possibility and I'll go on to the next one. Okay guys, so for this one, uh, I just wanted to talk about the Farseer. Now, um, the Farseer is a pretty tricky one. So you don't want to be making her in, in all, all the matchups. There are like a few where she is useful, but other than that, she's kind of a, a bit of a waste to be honest of your resources to, to invest in her. Um, so from what I know about her, some good matchups we can make her is against the Pyro Guard, because her Psychic Storm ability can, can wreck pretty low, uh, weak, low health infantry squads like Guardsmen. Um, and her mind war can also bring down the the command squad's health because everyone in that squad has pretty low health. She can also be used to uh, mind war or builders just to, you know, cripple your opponent's production capabilities a little bit, if you will. And I think she's a good one against like cultist nade masses as well, just just for the. For the uh, psychic storm ability, uh, but you'd have to have her with your dark reapers as well, just so your dark reapers can clean up those those uh, cultist squads too. Just bear in mind that uh, she will get knocked around by the grenades, but otherwise, yeah, sh there might be more uh, applications for her in other uh, matchups. If anyone is watching this video, that can give some advice in the comments that would be very much appreciated but uh yeah just thought i'd warn you guys just about the fast here she's pretty situational so don't always be investing in her all right guys now i will move on to the tier 2 builds okay guys so now let's talk about tier 2 so we've reached tier 2 with our um soul shrine here so what do we do now well, regardless of your matchup, you should definitely do this. At your Soul Shrine, you should research the war gear for enhanced optics and for the reinforced armor. Um, I don't know the exact stats for the armor, but I know that the optics will increase your, say, your Dark Reapers. Uh, it will increase their damage by 50% and also increase their range as well. And that's not just for Dark Reapers. As you can see, there's a list of other other uh, squads that'll apply to. So you definitely want these two for sure, absolutely. Um, okay, now depending on the way the battle is going right now, like for example, uh, if you're a pretty solid route to go, if, if you're not otherwise uh, sure what to do, in my opinion, is to go for the, uh, the Falcon with fire dragons so i'll be showing you that one uh, right now so let's say we build our support portal might need some more generators just to get our power going so yeah th this this build can you can really do it uh whenever to be honest um I'll show you just how good it is. We need to add the Fire Dragon Essex Stone. And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the Falcon's jump ability to just uh, jump into our opponent's base and attack his, attack his uh, economy. That's the, that's the point of this. And it can be really stressful for your opponent, especially when his army is out of his base and you start harassing it. He has to go all the way back just to chase you away and that can be incredibly useful um it can definitely definitely uh tip the the battle in, in your favor just pretend uh you know we're being attacked here okay so here's our falcon 
we will fleet a foot to it just to get there quicker. Add more squad members, obviously. And we can just go inside and now we drive, drive off. Okay, let's say we want to just harass in this general area, right? I didn't even do the researches, hold on. Yeah, okay, let's just say we're going to go off in this general area. We just jump in like this. Deploy. And just do some damage. Now, imagine this was like a, a listening post. This way we can... Uh, deny some requisition from our enemy and yeah this can just be really annoying I had fleet of foot on you want it off obviously decap the point I should probably run away here get back in and we just jump to another location Oh, lots of turrets around. I wasn't expecting that. But let's just say we, we just deploy here. And we are being pretty ferociously attacked by Necrons right now. This can all happen, obviously. But we just keep bringing down these ob uh, obelisks or listening posts, whatever the situation is for you. And, and this is pretty much how the build works, right? Go in, be annoying, decap points, move on to the next one, rinse and repeat go for our warp spiders definitely want those and yeah that's pretty much it guys so I will jump on to the next build okay guys now this one is kind of like a um, hmm if your opponent say you're up against Imperial Guard maybe or any any kind of race that is messing a lot of infantry infantry heavy uh, race like maybe orcs, um, sisters of battle, so on and so forth. This this build for that will be the vipers. So let me unpause here. We build the support bull as usual and we will just build another generator like I did before. I just reloaded the game so gotta redo everything. Uh, maybe I could just keep the support pull up for the next next uh, explanation as well, actually. Um, cool. So, let's capture that. In the meantime, you come over here. And I will upgrade this, just because we were attacked in this location last time. So, Vipers are very good at... at uh, countering vehicles. They're also very good at uh, countering infantry masses because of their knockback effect. So we just add the Viper Aspect Stone add-on. This is also a good idea to research, the vehicle hollow field research, just to make your vehicles a little tankier. And now we just queue up our Vipers. Just make a turret here just to be safe. And what this, this is going to do Oh, right. Okay, we need we need a webway, webway gate. I forgot about that. Don't forget to make your, your webway gates. Because this will add more population to your... To your army. And I think each webway gate produces... Yeah, plus three. Plus three vehicle cat. So we're going to make about four vipers. You can even go up to five, I think. I don't know if there's a limit to them. But, um... I've seen, yeah, four or five vipers made. And they're pretty quick to, to make as well. And they can also jump. So they're very versatile. Pretty insane uh, unit for their cost and their abilities. Doesn't seem to be a limit. Okay, cool. Let's just go out with the with these four then. So let's say your opponent has a bit of a mess going on here. We just jump in. 
And the good thing is, this doesn't have to be what we use these vipers for. We can even just jump into our opponent's base and attack their buildings. Because vipers are very strong uh, anti-vehicle as well. So like Necrons, we can aim for the generators, but we'll attack the turrets first. But as you can see, like, yeah, decent damage, right? On these turrets. So yeah, very annoying to deal with, very abusable. And uh, yeah, th that's pretty much it. There's, it's not rocket science, you just, just spam your, your Vipers out. Uh, if your opponent is struggling, this gives you the opportunity to segue into the warp spiders. Get your warp spiders as quick as possible and then just wrap the game up by completely dominating your opponent. That's usually how these go, you just go to the warp spiders. Uh, get your dark reapers even to just uh, harass a bit as well. But uh, if your vipers are in a bit of a pickle, just jump away. Like, that's that's what you need to do. Just, just get out of there. Uh, yeah. Obviously I'm not playing this properly, but uh, yeah. So this is this is one uh, build you can do for tier two. Good against vehicles and infantry masses. All right. Cool. On to the next one. Okay, guys. So this next build uh, I want to talk about is the Wraith Lord um, kind of mess. Uh, use this build if your opponent is like Chaos and they've massed a shit ton of Defilers and they're barraging your base or against Imperial Guard with Basilisks. Basically it's good anti-artillery um, counter. So let's just unpause here. We're going to make the Wraith Stone, oh, Wraith Lord Aspect Stone add-on. Just get some more generators going. Oh, and we also need the Webway Gate, of course. Absolutely need our Webway Gates for more population. Okay, cool. Now we make a Wraith Lord. We'll probably probably be making about three to four of these. Uh, I've even seen players make more. They just go ham. Uh, but it's up to you. Make what you need. Just keep an eye on your resources and what we're going to do with these Wraith Lords is we're going to set them to stand ground and range stance and we're going to add the bright lance uh, upgrade so this this thing is does a very high vehicle damage and we want that for sure and this uh, this is also good against buildings as well like I've seen players just just make Wraith Lords and they use it to go into the enemy base like eight or nine wraith lords and just tear down the hq like within seconds it's crazy what you you can do with it yeah lots of abuse you can do here but uh you know that that's up to you if uh, what you want to do nobody's stopping you right so <laughs> just use this power wisely um but yeah we can just go out now and i don't think these Necrons will have any sort of vehicles uh, right now. Uh, and you can also add the Bright Lance platform, which people use to combo with with these Wraith Lords. It's basically, the, the Bright Lance uh, makes the... what does it say? Weakens the armor, so so your Wraith Lords do even more damage to whatever the Bright Lance are attacking. And it's very crazy stuff. But this is what you do, you just walk around, you, you just shoot at um, vehicles and buildings. But like I said, this is a good artillery counter, you can just walk right up to the art artillery weapons if they're not, if they don't have any kind of uh, anti-vehicle defending them. And just really easily just take them down. This works especially well against... Um, defilers defiler spam yeah it's it's great so we can even just get yeah three of these going we'll take down this generator sure why not easy peasy look at how quick it's HP just goes down it's crazy 
bit imbalanced, I think. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is, so. Yeah, so this is the Wraith Lords. Uh, you can do what you want with that. And now I will move on to the next topic to talk about. Okay guys, so for this one I wanted to talk a little bit about the Harlequin. Now I think this one uh, is important because the Harlequin is a very situational unit to make. Uh, she's more of a, you want to use her as like a support unit. Don't, don't make her go out alone and sort of attack, uh, you know, enemy squads. You want her to be part of a kind of a strike force. Like say I have these two Dark Reapers and we're going to go out and cause some uh, mayhem. So basically like we run towards the squad here, we do our dance of death. Now this is perfect because this is just one squad caught out in the open. We can, oh, why are you running all the way there? Catch them out, disrupt them, gun them down while our Harlequin ties them up for us. Now against something like this where there are two Necron squads, right? We don't want to be jumping into a situation like this because what can happen is one squad can stop and just focus the Harlequin while the other squad just kind of runs away so basically you if there's only one squad sure you can get her out and disrupt it use the harlequin's kiss which can absolutely decimate some weak uh, squads but if there's like more than one like this yeah you don't want to be pushing her in because look uh, she can get focused down pretty easily and die quite quick right I think she's good against uh, commander units as well, just, you know, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, someone can correct me on that one if I'm wrong. But yeah, generally that's when you want to be using her. If your uh, squads get jumped by like a, yeah, some kind of assault marines or storm boys, uh, the harlequin can jump in and disrupt that squad and allow your Dark Reapers to just pull back. So she's more of a support uh, unit and she's very situational so make her when you need to make her otherwise you can just save those resources to do other things. If this was one Necron Warrior Squad attacking my LP sure I could run over but if there's two no. I, I could probably use two Harlequins one for each squad to tie them up but never just one against multiple squads. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it. Um, there were a lot of little points that I s had to skip over for this video to make it a little bit shorter, like um, when to make three Guardians or three Reapers. Um, and the fact that you can also use your Falcon to transport your Reapers around to cause trouble. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of feel like those those topics are a little bit more advanced and I just cut them out of this video just to make it a little bit shorter but um, I'm sure someone who's watching this will leave a comment down below um, explaining the situations when to use these and I always, I'll, I'll always uh, pin, pin those helpful comments so just check the comments below for, for any useful advice but yeah, anyway guys, um, so that's pretty much it for this video, and hope you guys learned something, and look forward to the next one, it's going to be about Sisters of Battle, and I will see you in the next one. Take care guys.